Look, okay, I get what you're thinking, but don't worry. This is not another video on you know who. This is just a regular old video on regular old Fairly Odd Parents, and I hereby solemnly swear that I will go through this entire video without mentioning him. So the Fairly Odd Parents, as stated in previous videos, is a show that I'm extremely passionate about. Lucky, I even got this neat little cleft the boy chin Wonder action figure. It's actually the same one you can see in the background of some videos on, but uh, no, not today. So yeah, I love The Fairly Odd Parents. It's heavily influenced me in my style of comedy, writing, and making sure my character never faces forward. You don't want to see that. Rule of threes, that's another thing it taught me. Rule of threes, your majesty! And it even goes further beyond that. To me, what makes classic Fairly Odd Parents stand out against something like Spongebob are the characters. Like, I personally think Spongebob is ten times funnier than Fop. But the thing that really draws me in are the surprisingly grounded character moments. Yeah, you wouldn't expect that from a show about a boy being granted furry godparents. But to me, the dynamics and personalities of whether it be Timmy or Cosmo or Wanda really elevates the show. It gives them some depth and really makes you feel for them. It's why something like the TV movie Channel Chasers will always stick with me. I don't love it because of all the random television references. I love it because it tells a story of Timmy needing to come to terms with the fact that he's eventually going to have to leave his childhood behind, along with the people in it, the good and the bad. We saw Timmy have to come to terms with this fact, and it really causes you to relate and feel for his character in the end. You don't want him to have to give up Cosmo and Wanda, but as the episode goes on, the more you realise, along with Timmy, that it's what's best for all of them. It was the perfect footnote to end the series on, showing you that even though Timmy does end up forgetting about his godparents, we see how much better his life has become from being able to give up his childhood things. I I'm not gonna cry. I'm, I'm, I'm the cool edgy guy who crosses his arms. I can't cry. I just, I, I just, I can't help but not get emotional at these great deals over at crowdmade.com. Slut. Nah, I'm just kidding. Let's move on. Gotcha. Scared you. And I'm not gonna ruin it by bringing up those awful live action movies and how they're retconned at all. I'm not gonna because what if I told you the series itself has another episode that completely steps all over this amazing ending? And what episode am I referring to? Season 8 Episode 2's TV movie, Timmy's Secret Wish. Now the Fairly Odd Parents has a surprising amount of specials. They first had Abra Catastrophe, which was pretty alright. Then we got the masterpiece that is Channel Chasers. Then they continued this string of hits with the three Jimmy Timmy Power Hours, Schools Out the Musical, Fairy Idol, oh Fairy Idol is so good. Then we got Fairly Odd Baby, which is, y you know, not as good, I guess. After this, we had the godly three-parter that is the Wishology. And finally, the last special the series ever got, Timmy's Secret Wish. Let's hope they went out with a bang. You know what I loved about the previous Odd Parent specials? How most would start off with either this unique little intro animation done in a different style, or a cool action homage that parodies the theme of the special. Like with the Wishology, they parody a bunch of trilogy movies in the opening. It's great to see. So of course the way to kick this one off would be characters boringly walking around a trail in silence before ending with the exact same joke as the Jimmy Timmy Par Rs. Oh sorry, did I say of course? What I meant was why? Well as you'll soon see, this special is desperate to rack up as many filler seconds as possible. The episode starts with us seeing Timmy making a ton of pointless wishes to try and rack up 1 million because he cares about that for some reason. And we can see Cosmo and Wanda egging him on too. Just like how they always acted towards Timmy making a string of pointless, selfish wishes. You see, this is the part when I go over how in the earlier episodes, Cosmo and Wanda got extremely impatient and fed up with Timmy when he made too many dumb wishes. After he gets it, he's congratulated by Jorgen and given a parade in his honor, because apparently no kid has ever made a million wishes before and that's like something to be proud of. He just said, I wish a million times, it's really not that impressive. So after a couple minutes of random jokes that go nowhere, everyone comes under the realization that so many of Timmy's wishes has led to the misery of others. So he's put in jail and has to go through a court trial in order to clear his name. Now at this point I was confused. The episode is called Timmy's Secret Wish and so far, I see no secret. Do you see a secret? Wow, that did a really good job of keeping it one. Here we're introduced to the episode's antagonist, Foop. Poof's anti-furry. So why isn't he just called anti-poof? He wants Timmy to be stripped of his godparents, as if they're gone, so will everything Timmy has ever wished for, including Poof. The episode hasn't even gone over it yet, but I'm pretty sure you can already see the pretty major hole in his plan. To make sure this video isn't just me recapping everything that happens, let's skip ahead to halfway through the episode, where the title finally comes into play. To convince the fairy council of Timmy's selfishness, he shows them that Timmy has made a secret wish, the worst offense a god kid could ever make, which is why it's only being brought up eight seasons in. It turns out that 
it, it turns out that Timmy has made a wish that makes sure everybody stays the same age as a way for him to never be able to lose Cosmo and Wanda. And Poof, I guess. I keep forgetting he's there. Because of this, the time is reset and we see Timmy 50 years in the future, who has now forgotten everything. So now he and Mr. Crocker for some reason must go back to Fairy World and set things right. This is possibly one of the worst cases of a ratings trap. It reminds me of the Spongebob Truth or Score special, where they hyped up all this stuff only for it to be used as random cutaways made for a trailer. And that's what Timmy's secret wish is. It was made for a trailer. And there's only one way to find out. Don't miss Timmy's Secret Wish, the new one-hour Fairly Odd Movie premiere. It's so obvious they had no clear idea of what they wanted to do for this story, so they just padded it out with nothing. The pacing here is so slow. A fair chunk of this 44 minutes are just spent in a courtroom, with boring back and forth. This special has like six major scenes. We open with the Million Wishes stuff, then the courtroom, then they're all old for a bit, then they go back to Fairy World, then to this place called Hocus... Po Poconos? Pocan Pocanos? And finally, back to the courtroom. With each scene just dragging on and on forever with no end in sight. Compare this to something like Channel Chasers or Schools Out the Musical. It's shocking to realize they're all the same length because those two are so dense, the plot is always moving forward. But here they just halt everything to tell jokes that really aren't as funny as they may think they are. And it's a shame because Early Furly Odd Prince was so funny. This show has some of the worst cases of flanderization I've ever seen. Timmy went from an average kid who no one understands, to a selfish kid who no one understands. Because he's so selfish. Cosmo and Wanda have gone from a pair of hopeless romantics, to a bickering couple who hate the mere thought of one another. Who finds this entertaining to watch? It's just a group of miserable people being miserable. And I've brought it up in my video about his other works, but later episodes just love the trope of saying, Oh, that? That would never ever happen. Then it happens and we all have a hearty laugh about it. They even have three of these jokes one after the other and acknowledge how overdone it's getting. But of course that's after this special's amazing opening song, A Million Wishes. You should look up this song, it's fucking awful. Fairly Odd Parents has great music. Again, I think Guy Moon goes way too overboard in the amount of sound effects he uses during episodes, but they've had consistently good music. My Shiny Teeth and Me, Give Us the Wand, If I Lived in TV, that one wasn't even used in the episode and is still amazing. They made it sound like the Friends opening. Ugh, I love it. So yeah, just like everything else, the song in this special sucks. It's just so boring and has no catchy rhythm at all. Since you were a youngster, you had a crummy life. An evil babysitter who chased you with a knife. And the visuals are awful compared to the amazing choreography of the others. Then there are the parts where I'm like, did you read over this at all? I like how in every modern Fairly Odd Parents episode, they have to have the part where they establish that Cosmo and Wanda can't use their wands. So they said that magic can't be used in this realm, and then Foop just goes ahead and uses magic. I liked that part a lot. How about when they establish that all wishes need to be documented, but nobody knew about Timmy's wish because he made Cosmo erase his memory after making it. So, so how did Foop get this piece of paper that clearly shows Timmy's wish being documented? It's not much of a secret wish if you write SECRET in big letters on top. I don't like bringing up the joke, wow they didn't try with this at all. But after season 7 they really did give up on trying to follow any kind of rules for the universe. Which is kind of an issue when your main characters literally own a book called Da Rules. You know, like how Cosmo and Wanda will just fly around and play inside of humans, and will straight up interact with them multiple times. But it's when they decide to go back and ruin previous episodes that arc me. So the reason Timmy and Crocker team up in the end is because Crocker is what reminds him of his fairies. And he explains that by straight up saying something along the lines of, Everybody knows the reason I'm so crazy is because I lost my fairy godparents in season 3 episodes 8's episode, The Secret Life of Denzel Crocker. And I get that for the sake of a reference that's fine to keep continuity, but the reason Crocker is so insane is because he doesn't remember that he had fairies, and is trying to prove they're real. But now I guess he just knows they exist and has photos of them, like, that's physical proof, that's all you wanted this entire series. Not only did his wish melt the polar ice caps, it also thought out Big Willy. If I were to have one positive with this episode, and it's a really minor positive, it's that I did enjoy the few references to previous episodes. But there should have been way more. Like in the place where all bad wishes goes, how about just flood that place with every bad wish Timmy has ever made? It increased the scope tenfold, but now nah, we just see Superbike and those little alien things in the background for a few seconds, that sure was worth it. I just have the word HATE written in my notes I took while watching this episode. 
You may think it's weird to feel this strongly about the Fairly Odd Parents and how much I care for its overall message and theming, but I don't know, I just, I just do. Like, I bet, but the writer felt real clever about this time freeze wish. It's like a meta commentary that explains why Timmy and the rest of the characters never age, aren't I smart? But no, that completely ruins what you previously established. Again, Channel Chasers was all about him coming to terms with the fact that he needs to leave his childhood possessions in the past. It really stuck with me. I mean, I've clearly listened to that message. But for the sake of a dumb reveal to throw away all that growth that Timmy had, just to say, nope, he's still selfish and wants to keep his fairies forever. And that's what really bothers me about this. So in the end, this for me was the exact moment where the Fairly Odd Parents died. I wanted to call the video that, but someone already did it. I'll get you next time, V in Infuso. Inf I'll get you next time, V Infuso. So when people try to tell me that it was Sparky or Chloe that ruined the Fairly Odd Parents, I'll just point to this episode. Sparky or Chloe could have worked if handled well. People like good, likable characters. And later, Fairly Odd Parents just didn't know how to write that. Maybe it's just a reflection on Butch himself. Oh, goddamn.